Machine learning is starting to make its way into the game development process. One of the biggest signs of this is the Unity package for machine learning implementation called ML Agents. This package uses Google's implementation of reinforcement learning called TensorFlow. Reinforcement learning is probably the most popular usage of artificial neural networks. In this type of learning, an agent does not know what the exact output should be and instead gets feedback based on his actions outcomes. In this video, we will take a look at the basics of artificial neural networks. We will create the simplest type of artificial neural network called Perceptron, which is a network with only one neuron, and a complex network that will learn based on the player's input. So what's the simplest artificial neural network or Perceptron? So Perceptron is a structure that is given a collection of inputs and a collection of desired outputs. For each element in the input collection, there is a corresponding value called weight. Also, the Perceptron has a value called bias that will direct the Perceptron towards the correct solution. To initialize the Perceptron, first we set weights and bias values to random numbers between minus 1 and 1. It is not a requirement, but working with values between minus 1 and 1 is easier for a network to process. The next step is to feed our network with a training set. A training set consists of collection of inputs and desired outputs. Let's take, for example, the OR statement and feed the Perceptron with this training set. The Perceptron will start its first iteration. The calculation each neuron in a network conducts is as follows. Every input value is multiplied by corresponding weight value. Next, those results of multiplications are added together with the bias values. Next, the result is passed to the activation function. Our activation function will take its parameter and check whether it's bigger than 0. If so, then we return 1, and if not, we return 0. Next, this returned value, 0 or 1, is compared to the desired output passed in the Perceptron in the training set. If the output of the activation function is equal to the desired output of the training set, we don't change anything and check the next training set. We do this process all over again. For the second training set, we can see that the activation function output is not equal to the desired output. In that case, our Perceptron needs to change its weight, values and bias. First, we calculate the error value, which is a difference between the desired output and the calculated output. Next, each input is multiplied by the error and is added to its weight. That way we calculate the new weight value. Bias is calculated just by adding the error value to it. Going once through all the training sets constitutes one iteration. As we can see, after a few iterations our Perceptron adjusted its weights and bias in a way that always gives us a correct result for a particular training set. To visualize what happens in this example, we can draw a graph representing the values in the OR statement. What a neuron does is it simply draws a line that separates the values that should give an outcome of 1 from those that should give an outcome of 0. Updating weights directs the line closer to separate those values. As you can see, there is not just one set of weights that give correct values, because we can have many different lines that separate outputs correctly. So every time you start a new learning process with the same training set, you will get different weights. To implement this system, I created a simple game of whack-a-mole. In this game, we have a hammer that has to smash an object that has a given color and shape. First, I created a class that implements a Perceptron. The training set will be provided to the Perceptron based on the spawned objects and the desired results. Objects are spawned by a script called item spawner, which selects randomly a material and a mesh. Next, I created a simple system that spawns items and sets training data 
to the perceptron. Only when index of material is zero and mesh is zero, I send outcome equal to zero. Then the perceptron does one epoch of training. First, it calculates the output and updates weights based on the calculated error. Then it calculates the output from the received data and passes it to the hammer object, which will smash if the output is zero. Lastly, I add the sent training data to the training set collection. This way we trained our perceptron to learn the OR statement, in which the proper color and shape are represented as input zero and the output that makes the hammer move also is zero. Next, I wanted to go a step further and create a more complicated game that uses a complex neural network. To create a complex neural network, we need many neurons that are arranged in a certain structure. The neurons are grouped into layers. The first layer takes the input and every output value from that layer is passed to every neuron in the next layer as an input value. The last layer output is the output value in the whole network. Complex neural networks can help us solve more difficult problems, but the calculation complexity and the time needed to one epoch of training is much larger. I wanted to create a game where enemy cars would be steered by a neural network that is fed values from a player input. So I found online a script that implements a neural network. As I mentioned before, there are many activation functions. In our case, I used the tanH function, which has values between minus 1 and 1. It fits the car movement well. You can find more information on activation functions in the link below. I also have created a script that will be attached to a player car. That script will cast 5 rays every frame to figure out where walls are. To simplify data passed to the network, I used the value 0 when a wall was out of the raycast distance, 0.5 when the distance to the wall was less than the raycast distance, but larger than half of that distance, and 1 when the distance to a wall was less than half of the raycast distance. After exiting the game, all of the collected data was saved into a file. Next, I created a script that would take those values in the file and parse them into inputs and outputs to create a training set for the neural network. The AI car would first run 1000 epochs of training and after that it would try to drive. The AI car would also raycast in the same way as the player had. The results of those raycasts would be passed to the neural network. What we expect to see is the neural network returning similar outputs that were provided in the training set. If that happens, the car will not drive outside the racetrack. For this example, I wanted to use the car controller that I created for one of my previous videos. But because it is a physics-based controller and there are more input values to consider such as the richest body's velocity, I couldn't make it work in that way. So I created the simplest control that I could make. Not every training results in a successful run, so every time it did, I saved the network's weights to file so that the AI car could just load them on demand. To finish off, I created a simple race manager that spawns AI cars and passes a text file with weights to load into a neural network to these cars. And there we go a fully machine learning based racing AI. It is of course not the most optimal way to implement such AI. It is just an example how we can use artificial neural networks in game development process. And that's it guys. You can find the whole project on GitHub in the description below. I hope you enjoyed it and please like and subscribe if you like my content. There are new videos every Monday. Also, leave a comment, I'm happy to answer all of your questions. Take care!